All right, the balloon is gone. In February, the U.S. shot down a suspected Chinese spy balloon and three unidentified flying objects over North American airspace. Though these airborne objects might seem like they came out of nowhere, surveillance balloons have actually been around for centuries. Here's a look at the history of spy balloons, what's been used in the past, and why countries are still using them today. The first recorded use of balloons for spying dates back to 1794, when the French experimented with hydrogen-filled balloons during the French Revolutionary Wars. The Battle of Fleurus was the first battle assisted by aerial observation. About 60 years later, balloons made their debut in the U.S., where the Union and Confederate armies used them for aerial reconnaissance during the American Civil War. Uh, these would normally be tethered to the ground. The technology was essentially the human eye, uh, possibly aided with some uh, binoculars. One of the primary uses early in the war was just to see where enemy camps were, where were they concentrating troops, how many troops were they moving. This is Thomas Payone. He's an exhibit curator at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., a.k.a. a spy balloon expert. That technology, that idea did continue, and especially leading up to World War I, where pretty much all of the combatants uh, on both sides used observation balloons. These balloons were linked to the ground by telephone wires, which allowed them to direct artillery in real time. They became uh, highly prized to be shot down. Also, as a result, became very heavily protected. Both sides tended to ring their observation balloons with multiple anti-aircraft gun positions. Uh, they often would have fighters that were located nearby to be sent up to protect them if enemy planes were coming to attack. Bringing death to some 5,000 men each day. Rigid airships, commonly referred to as dirigibles or zeppelins, were introduced as a weapon of war in World War I. They were powered by engines but steered with elevators and rudders. These stretched over 500 feet long and could carry around 20 people, their equipment, machine guns, and up to two tons of bombs. In World War II, the U.S. Navy unleashed a new weapon for anti-submarine warfare, the K-ship. The Blimp Patrol, death to submarines. They looked like a blimp, and they had a, a, a large control car underneath. And what these K-ships did was they helped alert the convoys to any enemy submarine that may be operating in the area. And although they did have some weapons on them, they mainly were used to help uh, call in reinforcements. They would call in other ships. Ship sinkings have reached an all-time low, and the Navy salutes its blimps. Up to this point, most U.S. spy balloons were not high altitude. Generally, when, when people say high altitude, you're talking about the stratosphere. Most of the balloons we're talking about, especially during the Civil War and World War I, they flew no higher than 2,000 feet. It wasn't until after World War II that the U.S. began exploring high-altitude spy balloons. During the Cold War, the U.S. military launched a series of large-scale missions in which balloons carrying cameras floated over Soviet territory. And when the U.S. sent troops to Iraq and Afghanistan in this century, it brought balloons loaded with video cameras, sensors, and thermal imaging capabilities to watch over remote bases. They could send these up and have surveillance 24-7 with these. They could be used to monitor critical road intersections and also monitor areas to uh, ensure that nobody was, say, planting IEDs or setting up for an attack. Today, the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol uses surveillance balloons to monitor the southern border. But with more advanced technology like planes and satellites, why still use balloons? The long loiter time that balloons offer um, have been kind of one of their top benefits throughout the ages. Satellites, because they are in orbit, you have shorter windows of time that you can use their sensors on them over a specific area. Once it passes over, you have to wait for it to kind of come back around. Balloons are also less reliant on fuel than aircraft. These advantages help explain why the Pentagon has shifted to increase funding for high-altitude inflatables, according to a national security expert. The latest high-tech balloons have the potential to track hypersonic weapons, which are being developed by China and Russia.